I'm John Furrier. I'm here at uh, Google I.O. with uh, John Schroeder, the CEO of MapR. You were just in the session uh, with Google announcing your big partnership. Uh, tell us, what, what did you announce? Yeah, what we announced today, it's, uh, it's a really exciting announcement for us. So we're big supporters of the Google Compute Engine. We've been running on the Compute Engine for a number of months. And basically what we've done is uh, worked out a partnership with Google where we're the we're the provider for a Hadoop distribution to run big data analytics on top of the Google Compute Engine. And uh, I think you can tell from the session people are pretty excited about it. Uh, you look at the, the cost comparison between running in your private cloud and the public cloud, and uh, saving money for people really makes them happy, right? So the Google guys are up there talking about the cloud. Obviously, they run the big cloud. They have their Google. Amazon has a book book business and their right, cloud right, as well. Right. Um, those guys are smiling. They know a lot about the infrastructure. And you guys were showing some stats up there. Obviously, the cloud is a benefit. It's like outsourcing. Uh, you can outsource a lot of costs. You guys showed a stat where you guys did a, a TerraSort, just a, a you know, high-end benchmark yep, yep. For, for data, big data. Um, it took it cost you guys sixteen dollars to work it. Sixteen bucks. And, and the equivalent on-site deployed uh, hardware, hardware only was five million. Yeah. And time to prov- provision that was in months. It, and you did it in minutes. Can you elaborate on that? Amazing stat. Yeah, it, 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 if you look at what we compared, is uh, we ran a, a TerraSort on twelve hundred and fifty six servers, and we were able to, to boot that up and run it in a matter of minutes. And we ran an uh, entire TerraSort in a minute twenty seconds. And yeah, if you look at the instance hour cost on that, it comes to about sixteen bucks. Uh, the previous record or the record for TerraSort was run on premise on physical servers on fourteen hundred and sixty servers. Um, with about four times as many cores and four times as many drives. And if you look at assembling that sort of environment, it would cost you five, six million in CapEx alone, and you'd have to have the electrician there, HVAC on the roof. It'd take you months to do. So it's just a dramatic difference. We've been following the infrastructure as a service business for a while. I've been real critical of it as a race to zero because it's like a hosting model. But what things are happening in the, in the big data space and at applications in general is that the platform as a service layer has come in as a real differentiation opportunity where the pressure from applications is to actually have more power, more storage, more capability. Can you comment on what's happening in there? Because the speed factor and the cost is pretty compelling. But outside that, what are the other market forces that you see really kind of creating new new life in, in infrastructure as a service and platform as a service? Well, you know, I... I I can I actually believe ten years from now everything's going to run in the cloud. I mean, just a few months into starting my business over three years ago, I'd already put twenty tons air air conditioning on the roof just for my QA lab. And why do that? You want to sign your resources where they can move the needle forward on your business. And I think the general trend, while there's still a lot of talk about security and and people's concerns about data security, the trends in the direction of the cloud. I mean, we're putting all our Facebook information, out, all our all our personal information out there into Facebook. If you look at the amount of information you have in your Salesforce account, they know every single sales call, every deal you're working on, everybody who participated in those deals. Look at the information you put in WebEx. If you look at your WebEx report, it's every meeting you had, who attended, what the presentation was, maybe even a video. So while there still is concern about security, certainly the trend is toward the cloud, and I think uh, it's going to be a growing trend going forward. It's just more compelling than trying to build out these difficult-to-build data centers. So you guys have been in the news lately. Uh, so we were at uh, we had the Cube at Hadoop Summit, and uh, yeah. you guys were big supporters. I appreciate the, uh, the sponsorship and underwriting there at the Cube. Uh, but you guys also announced a deal with Amazon. Yeah, okay, yeah. Now you got Google. You got kind of a thing for the cloud. Why the alignment with public cloud? Um, is there something that you're seeing that others aren't there? Yeah, there, I mean, there's pull from customers who want to run in a public cloud environment. So there's kind of two things that we get out of that. One is it's a very unique, compelling go to market, which is instead of going to a customer and saying, hey, let me sell you three years of pre, you know, three years of capacity that you don't really need now. Pay for the usage, pay as you go. And so it's a very low entry point for the customers. And we're getting asked by large organizations to provide that service. Um, if you're going to do that service, do it with the guys who really know how to build infrastructure. So it'd be crazy to build your own cloud service, you know, partner with Amazon, partner with Google. They're going to build out the infrastructure better than anyone else. And then you can put the, 
your own world class software on top of it. And then the final point, I think it says who's really on top of the Hadoop market. I mean, we're all after these sorts of partnerships, and you look at who Google and who Amazon chose to work with, and it was MapArm. I talk about the business model. Obviously, uh, in the cloud, it's buy as you go. It's like uh, having electricity in your house and just yeah. a small little meter on the side rather than a substation, you know, as I used to say, say to people. But let's talk about the business model. I mean, obviously, uh, is it good for you to go by the drink? And what's the environment? Because we said this pull from customers. Talk yeah. about uh, yeah, the business it, model it's, around it's, this. It's great for your business model if you're early enough to incorporate it into your business model. If, if, if your business, business model is predicated on getting people to buy all-you-can-eat multi-year licenses or perpetual licenses and, and you need to pull that revenue forward, you can't do it in the cloud. But if you're early and you build that in, it becomes a wonderful deferred revenue stream for you. So it's really positive, for you, right? And uh, the way we do that also is through two different approaches. A lot, since we have such major partners, customers will go to AWS or they'll go to Google uh, Compute Engine and they'll find us that way. So we, we can market through that from more of the consumer side of it, right? But then our enterprise sales force and the enterprise sales forces of our partners, they can go out and sell blocks of instance hours. And the and the deals get pretty big. I mean, a $300,000 instance hour uh, purchase means we'll, we'll reserve that many hours for a customer. And there's kind of a couple benefits there. One is uh, we can approach that customer from a more strategic hands-on level that maybe Amazon or Google wouldn't want to do and help consult with them and make the choice. And then secondly, it gives the CIO the ability to manage their expenses. Because while paid by the drink sounds good, it wouldn't sound good if you were surprised by your cost per month going from 20000 to 600000 month to month, and you, you didn't budget for that. So it gives them a way to say, okay, I bought, let's say, 500 interest hours. I'm going to give it to a business unit. Meter to that. That's what you're getting for the next the next three months. You know, right? public cloud when it first came out was great. Everyone's like, "Hey, put your credit card down." Became a great place for shadow IT, great for developers. Uh, yeah. But when you talk to enterprise, so you guys are known for being the big data, you know, enterprise yeah. grade grade uh, Hadoop. Um, the criticism was, "I'm not going to put mission critical stuff on the cloud. I'll put do some Black Shoals analysis all at night. I don't have to deploy some hardware." But in a way, that is big data. So talk about what you've seen with big data, how that's changed the public cloud equation in terms of the kind of compute, spinning up and doing the reserves, because now you're seeing kind of that Black-Scholes kind of analysis as a, a use case. Are the use cases expanding more with big data analytics? Are you seeing that? And is that the real driver here, or is there something else going on? I, I think there's a, a general trend toward, you know, compute in the cloud. I think big data analytics requires such um, scalable access. I mean, maybe you need 50 nodes today and you need 1,200 nodes tomorrow. So I think that scalability is interesting. I think uh, DR into the cloud is very interesting. So if you look at doing your on-prem, and then you'd say, well, I want, I want to do some mirroring to do DR in the cloud. I think that's another use case we see pretty uh, uh, consistently. So certainly quick scale up, scale down, and DR into the cloud are, are, are a couple good use cases. And um, I, so I think big data is a driver for it, but in, in general, I'm, I'm kind of a believer in the public cloud anyway. It's really early. So let's talk about uh, open source. I see you guys are open source with with, uh, with Hadoop, and you yeah. have some extensions. Is Google going to be open source? They mentioned on stage at open source. What's the aspect of open source? Are they open source or stuff? Are they going to keep stuff under a, kind of a hardened top? Um, yeah, I mean, where? well, that, that's probably best for Google to answer, but what they said in there is, you know, the, the enabling tools are going to open source. So, so you look at what's the value of open source. Well, one of the values is ubiquity, right? So if you want people to build on top of App Engine, or you want to build on top of Google Compute Engine, and you give them some tools and you open source them, then they can take advantage of those, and you get, you're going to get ubiquity out of that, right? Um, they're certainly keeping the behind the data center stuff their secret sauce, right? Like the the questions that they responded to with it regarding uh, you know, what's your net, network Amazing. infrastructure, they said, well, that's that's it's the really good Google stuff, right? Yeah, it's the stuff you can't sauce. see behind the curtain. Yeah, so it's a good enabler. I think that's some of the attributes of Hadoop as well. Is it made a an API or a set of APIs ubiquitous in the market, and uh, and you get some innovation there. Thanks so much for uh, taking the time to speak with us. Uh, congratulations, great endorsement from Google. Essentially, you know the seminal paper of Matt produced, well documented within yeah, yeah, Google. Yeah. You guys have uh, some Google DNA. So congratulations on the deal, and mm -hmm. thanks for spending some time with us. Thanks. All right, great.